Hi, welcome to Embracing Our Life. I just wanted to say thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and check out this video. I am going to do a complete walkthrough on how to can and my carry, which is my electric pressure canner. It's a Nesco brand, so we've named her Nessie. And she is a great friend. <laughs> she just takes care of me. <laughs> um, so I'm canning some vegetable, leftover vegetable soup today in the crock pot. When I made vegetable soup the other day, I made a second crock pot full. Guys, it's so easy to do that. If you already have ingredients out, just mix the second batch and then you can can it. I'm gonna go ahead and get that canned up. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use this Nessie Carry Electric Pressure Canner. Now pressure canning is not that hard. Um, canning is not that hard. I like to think of it as like grandma's secret recipe that's been passed down in the family. You want to follow the rules exactly so that you know it tastes just like grandma. But when you get down to it and you start doing that recipe a few times, a few times, then it becomes old hat and you kind of know the process. And that's kind of how I like to think about canning. It's just like grandma's recipe. So I want to be careful to make sure I follow all the steps. You want to be careful that you follow the steps. You want to be, you know, safe and clean. You want to make sure you abide by the canning um, rules for the food that you're putting in your jars. So come along with me and I'm going to walk you through this. And I hope this blesses and encourages you. And I hope it helps somebody have confidence that I needed when I learned how to do this. And so hopefully I can be that person that could be there with you in your kitchen and kind of help walk you through this. We can in our home. <laughs> this is our homestead. This is our life. <laughs> and I have tried to record that first part twice. So I want to show you the culprit to making the noise behind the camera. Come here, Shadow. Shadow, come here. You want to say hi? <laughs> come here. Come here. Sit. 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 This is my dog, Shadow. <laughs> can you say hi? Say, I'm sorry, friends, that I was so loud during Mama's video. <laughs> thing I'm going to do, it's very simple. I'm just going to plug her in. Your Nessie has, or your Carrie or Nesco, has an exhaust and an airtight these two are exhaust and this is airtight and so when you first start it you want to keep it on exhaust you'll see this red little dial that's kind of set down in there you can put your finger down in there and feel how it's set down in there when the pressure is up that red dial will come up to that silver spot right up there on the top of that metal thing so you'll be able to tell that the pressure has been has is up and it is still full pressure Okay, one thing that you need to do to get started is put your lids and a pot of boiling water on the stove. I am using my four jar canning lids. Absolutely love these. These have been great. So I got some water going with my lids. I actually have a teapot going of water as well. Christmas bargain, don't you love it? It was $10 at Walmart. I was so tickled to get it. Um, one of the biggest tips about pressure canning is you want to make sure the contents of your food and your jars, no matter what food you put in there, the temperature is the same as the water that you put in there. So when you have a stovetop pressure canner, um, some of those canners give you certain amounts of water you have to put in. And for our carry, we have to put in seven cups of water. So. My soup has been in my crock pot on warm all day, so I'm going to boil some water on the stove. Kind of watch it so it gets to where it's the same temperature, not extremely boiling. And then that way, the temperature of my food and the temperature of my water is the same. You could totally put cold broth, cold soup, raw meat, and your pressure canner with cold water. So, I've done that before. It has worked wonderful. So always just keep that in mind. I have clean sanitized jars. I've checked the rims for chips and cracks. I have a clean rag with vinegar on it ready um, for me to wipe my rims. You want to use vinegar when you're using 
when you're putting um, meats or soups or broth in your jars. The vinegar actually cuts the grease around the rims, which helps you have a better seal. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up these jars, and then I will bring you back. All of my vegetable soup is in my jars. I have a little bit left in my crock pot that I'm just going to put in the fridge for lunch tomorrow. So now I'm just going to take my vinegar rag and wipe the rims of my jars very well to make sure any grease that might have gotten on it is cleaned off. You want to make sure that you get a really good seal with your lids. Okay, so I have my jars inside my canner. I put my lids on, I put my rings on, and I've tightened it just finger tight, not too tight. You want to make sure you don't tighten your rings too tight or your lids could buckle. And so I've got them in the canner with seven cups of water. I'm going to show you what to do next. One thing you do want to do is just always take a good look at your rubber ring. Make sure it looks nice. There's no cracks or food residue or anything on it that could compromise your seal. Put your lid down. You're going to close it, turn it very easily like that to say close. Make sure that your dial is on exhaust like we talked about before. You're going to come down here and for pressure canning you're going to hit the high button. High pressure is how I remember that. You're going to set your time for whatever time that you need for the food in your jars to process properly. So soup is 90 minutes. And then all you do is hit the start button. What your carry is going to do is it's going to have this dial as it's bringing up everything to the same temperature. Once all the temperatures reach at the same level inside, the dial will say E10 and it will start counting down for 10 minutes. You want to let this stay on exhaust for that whole 10 minutes. And you're going to see steam coming out of here. I'll bring you back and I'll show you. Um, once that E10 is done, and it's done counting down for 10 minutes, it will beep at you. That E10 is just like if you have a stovetop canner. On the stovetop canner, you have a little spigot that you want it to vent for 10 minutes. That's exactly what this is doing. And then once that E10 counts down 10 minutes, it'll beep at you, and it'll have an E0. Then you come over here, and you flip your dial from exhaust to airtight. And then that pressure will build. And once that pressure has built, it will start counting down for the time needed that you set for the food that you're processing. Friends, I will bring you along for all these steps and I will kind of show you what this does. It's very easy. After that time is up for the 90 minutes that we've set, it'll beep and say it's off and we just unplug it and walk away so so simple so as you are waiting for that dial to say e10 you're going to start hearing things bubble and sigh and stuff to start to come to pressure you will see a little bit of steam starting to come out of the back event there that is totally normal she's just trying to get herself all geared up to process that food exactly the way it needs to be processed I tend to take this time to do a little bit of dishes, wipe off my counters, tidy up the kitchen a little bit. You can walk away from this canner for the most part. For the first few steps though, I like to be in here, especially when I'm waiting for it to count down the 10 minutes so I make sure that I hear it when it beeps and I can get that exhaust gauge turned to airtight. The beeping is kind of loud. I actually don't mind it. It helps remind me if I'm in the other room and I hear it beeping that I have to come in here and do the next step. If you have an Instapot, this runs exactly like an Instapot in many ways. It steams from the vent like an Instapot does and you just have to press a couple buttons. That's basically all we're going to have to do. We flip that gauge when the 10 minutes is done, when it's done venting for 10 minutes, and then we walk away. Guys, we walk away from it until it's done. Don't go outside and garden. <laughs> Don't go to town and do your errands, unless you have somebody at home kind of keeping a good eye on you and they know exactly what to do. But you can go to the other room, 
You can get you a cup of tea or coffee. You can sit down and watch a show with your husband as long as you can have your ear to the canner when it beeps. That is why I love this canner so much. I can piddle around my house. I can do other things. I can go and sew something for the shop. I could go to the living room and put my feet up and drink some coffee while the canner is going. I don't have to be in here watching it for four or five hours, making sure that the stove is the right temperature and that the right amount of pressure is on there. That's already built in. It's built into that gate. It just beeped at me one time and it is showing that E10 on the screen. We now have a little bit more steam coming out of the vent. Don't you worry about that. That's totally normal. You just give her space, let her do her thing. She is just fine. We're just gonna wait 10 minutes for this to count down. And so stay kind of close to where she's at. And then as soon as that timer is done, like I said, we're gonna flip our gate and be able to go put our feet up. Hear that beep? That is showing us that it's done for the 10 minutes. So we're gonna flip our gauge to airtight. And you will quickly hear the steam quiet down. She'll settle down for a few minutes. The steam is now starting to come out of your valve right here. It's a little bit more steam than before, so I always just place my Nessie out from under my cabinets, just like an Instapot. You want to give her room to just put off steam. You want to give her room to just do her thing, and you don't need to let it bother you. She is just going to put off that steam like a regular pressure canner would on the stove top. The other thing that you will notice too is that your little red gauge that's back here is now up. It's up above that silver line. Okay, you see just beeped at me and told me that she is going to start her processing time for 90 minutes. Once that processing time is over, she will beep again at you. Sometimes she'll beep once, sometimes she'll beep twice. And when it says off, when that 90 minutes is over, all I'm going to do is unplug the cord and let her sit overnight because it's evening time and this lady is tired and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my night, making sure that I wait for that beep so that I can just unplug her. Leftovers is my craft pot to fill another pint jar and a quart freezer container. I did not have enough to run another batch of candy, and that's okay with me. I'm going to use that jar for my lunch tomorrow or the following day, and I might pop this big thing in the freezer, or I might see if my neighbor may want some homemade vegetable soup. One of the wonderful things about canning is that if you want, you have the ability to take a jar and bless somebody with it. And so having an extra little bit of soup would be a good way to just brighten somebody's day on this very cold, <laughs> snowy Indiana day. Well, good morning, friends. Um, don't you just love that cute little cup? My husband got me that for Christmas. So, it's another day, and I took all of my vegetable soup out of my can. So last night, you came along with me to do my second batch. I had already had a batch done earlier in the day. So we ended up getting four quarts and five pints of vegetable soup, which was great. We ended up putting those extra two um, in the freeze. So, yeah, last night when it beeped, I unplugged it. I snuggled up with my honey, and we watched a show, and then I went to bed. This morning, I pulled them out. And I'm going to let them sit for 12 to 24 hours and then take the rings off, wash them down really good, again with some vinegar on a clean rag, and then I'm going to store them. I'm going to be completely honest with you. We had one jar that did not seal. And sometimes when you do all the right things, that can still happen. Don't be discouraged. It's not that big of a deal. I've had that happen many times, not like all in a row, but you know, in my seven years, six, seven years of canning, it's happened. 
And so what I will do with that one jar is I will put it in the freezer. I might pour it in a Ziploc baggie, mark it. That way I can rotate it in with our meals, rotate it with my lunches. I also could use this jar to bless a family if I wanted to. So sometimes things happen and we just need to embrace this life. Like I've said before, God gives us these situations. We don't need to be down and out about it. And I'm not the only canner. I know that I've had jars not seal, water bathing, and pressure canning. So don't get discouraged if this is your first time doing it. Um, just know that I'm here for you. Another thing I also did is put a jar of water in with it, pressure can a jar of water. This is good for emergencies, although I'd rather fill up water jugs for emergencies in our house because our canning jars tend to be low. Um, but it's a great way to make sure you have enough room. You always need to make sure your canner is full. You can't pressure can one jar of food. So if you have leftovers throughout the week, you make a big pot of soup, big pot of chili, you know, some taco meat, pulled pork. Just make sure you have enough jars to fill your canner. So if you got through that batch of canning and you canned along with me, or if you have canned something, this is for you. Cheers. I'm so excited for you. As you go along this process and do it more and more and more, you'll get more confident. So I just want to say thank you for coming with me today to can up some vegetable soup. Thank you for coming into my home. Um, we do life here. This is a living and working homestead. And so um, I, I appreciate you um, joining me in my kitchen. And I just pray blessings over you and yours and that you will be able to embrace this life that God has given you and be a good steward of everything he has put in front of you. If you would like any more information about my carry, I've linked the link below. I've also put some links in my Amazon store for jars and anything else that you need for canning. Um, I also have a link there for the four jar lids. We absolutely love them. They are the best lids that we have used so far in canning. They are really reliable. So leave any questions in the comments. I'm here for you, friends. Let me know if you've canned anything recently and what your favorite thing to can is. And till next time.